Welcome to TYT Interviews. I believe we have an excellent interview for you guys today. Professor Reza Aslan, the author of Zealot, The Life and Times of Jesus of Nazareth, and a uh, person who's been in the news a little bit recently. <laughs> We're going to discuss all that. Uh, now, uh, I want to uh, tell the audience, as we always do, we're very honest with where we stand. There will be things that I agree with. Uh, I want to say Professor Aslan, but Reza. <laughs> Reza yeah. Okay. Uh, and there are things that I disagree with him on. I believe, but that's why we have the conversation. Uh, yeah. We're hoping to have a rational conversation here. We'll talk a little bit about the issue of uh, bigotry that's been in the news a lot regarding Bill Maher, Sam Harris, etc. And then we'll also talk about religion itself where we might have some disagreements. So first, thank you for being on. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. I'm hey. excited. Yeah, it's great to have you here. So. Uh, let's get started with um, this idea that's been in the news. Uh, you know, Sam Harris and Bill Maher do a program where they're talking about Muslims and how they're, it, it appeared to the average man that they were saying that they're a little different than the rest of the religions mm -hmm. and that we well, should be concerned. Well, said that very clearly, that yeah. all religions are bad, but Islam is the worst of them, is basically right. Mars' position. And Sam Harris's position is, I don't know if it's different than Bill Mars, but it was stated a little differently in that case where he said, Islam is the mother load of bad ideas, as opposed to Muslims. Which is what he says all the time. Yeah, right. the notion that I think a lot of people uh, believe that what Sam is trying to say is that, oh, there are these extremists in the Muslim world and they should be you know, uh, rejected and condemned, but that that's not some sort of larger statement about Islam. That, if you've read anything that Sam Harris says, that is not what he says at all. The best thing you get from Sam Harris is what he said on Bill Maher's show, which is that he's okay with Muslims who, quote, don't take their religion seriously. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, is the principal problem with the whole sort of new atheist conception about Islam, and Sam Harris is probably the, the biggest culprit in this, is that because they have such a absolutist uh, and exoteric idea about religion, they believe that if you are someone who does not follow the sort of literalist understanding of the Quran or the Bible or whatever, then you're not really a Muslim, you're not really a Jew, you're not really a Christian. So do you see how he says it? Those who don't take their faith seriously mm -hmm. are the, the good Muslims. Well, so I'm really torn on that actually, okay, because, and I'll tell you why. Because I, I think that, uh, that you're actually overly kind to them in that interpretation. Here's why I say that. Because when I read Sam Harris, and I've read a lot now of what he has said and his defense of what he has said, mm. I don't get a sense of treating all the religions equally. And he often says he does not treat all the religions right. equally. He says, for example, the Mormons are more wrong than the Christians. The Christians are totally wrong, but the Mormons are even slightly more wrong. Okay. <laughs> now, I think that's a really interesting, debatable point. Okay, uh, but. But I'm, I'm fairly comfortable with that. I think it doesn't make any sense. Two plus two uh, doesn't equal five or 13. Neither one yeah. is more wrong. They're both wrong, right? And so I'm agnostic. I disagree with the religion. So that's OK. But I, I think where he gets into real trouble, in my opinion, is when he says, no, Muslims do believe in their faith, OK? And and that's the problem. But Christians yeah. and Jews don't really believe. Don't really, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So that makes uh, Muslims are really bad because the books are terrible and they believe the books. <laughs> the Christians and Jews, not so bad because right. they don't really believe the books. And it's so simplistic that it's almost silly. Like it's, uh -huh. it's, when you start to say it out loud, it's hard to imagine why anyone could possibly take that kind of thinking seriously. Which, by the way, is precisely why Sam Harris constantly has to explain away the things that he's said or the things that he's written, because it's hard to believe that someone would actually think this way in a, in a rational, logical way. So I think that, again, it, certainly the issue here for a lot of these new atheists, whether we're talking about Dawkins or Harris or what have you, is a complete misunderstanding of religion in general, a total misunderstanding of what religion is, how it's lived, uh, the difference between the scripture and the lived experience of a community of faith. Um, but when it comes to Islam, what you see not just from Harris but also from Dawkins and from Marr is uh, an extremism that borders on bigotry, a simple way of thinking that 
yeah, all religions are bad, but this one religion is much, much worse. And that anyone who doesn't actually follow the most extreme or grotesque interpretations of this religion is not a real Muslim, not a serious Muslim, doesn't take their, their religion seriously. So somehow, Harris is a better expert in what Islam is or means than the 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. Okay, so I want to get back to religion in a second, but to answer your earlier point about how can they possibly believe this, I know that answer, okay? It's, it's the Don Lemon effect, okay? Mm -hmm. So here's this, look, I'm gonna be a bad guy here and say Don Lemon's a little simple, okay? He's a simplistic guy, I, I'm trying to couch it, but all right, so he's, he turns on the TV, he turns on his channel, CNN, mm -hmm. and he sees a lot of bombs. And he sees beheadings, he sees yeah. you know honor killings, whatever it might be, and he sees that Muslims are doing it, right? So Reza, what they would say to you is, come on, are we not blind? We're not, right. uh, you're insulting our intelligence, it's always the Muslims. Yeah. So what do you say to that? Well, so Nicholas Kristof had a great line where he said, you know, the media reports on the planes that crash, not the planes that take off. So if all you knew about planes was what you read in the media, you would assume that every plane crashes. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've had this conversation with the media all the time where they say, um, you know, it's just a undeniable fact that mm -hmm. there are millions and millions of Muslims who are countering uh, violence, who are constantly speaking out against Islam. Every single Muslim organization in the world has uh, issued fatwas and declarations almost on a weekly basis. Every major religious figure, we had 127 uh, Muslim clerics representing every sect and school of law in Islam just a couple of weeks ago issue uh, a declaration against ISIS and against religious violence. And the media knows that because they own Google. Anybody who owns Google can answer that question. <laughs> but then they go, well, why don't we hear it? And my response is, you're the media, you answer that question. <laughs> I mean, why are you asking me why we don't hear it? We don't hear it because it's not news. So Reza, there are two different things there. One, the whole idea of the, why, don't the, why does an average Muslim come out and say things against ISIS and the beheadings yeah, is- That's just stupid. Yeah, it is. There's yeah. no other way to couch that because one, as you said, they have said it. They've said it over and over and over and over again Constantly. to the point where no Christian would ever say it. Like, why doesn't every Christian group, why doesn't the Pope say the abortion uh, clinic bombings are wrong? Well, I, that's not his job, right? Mm -hmm. But nobody ever asked them to say that, okay? And so, and then the other part of it is like, I talk about my family. Uh, we're Turkish, so I'm not Muslim. Okay, I have rejected the faith, okay? I don't believe it. But my uncle and his aunts, and they're all Muslim, and they're not Muslim in the way that the media portrays them, like, and Sam Harris does, thinking yeah. about radical Islam and what can I do. The well, reason, so, that, so in other words, they're fake Muslims. <laughs> right, but the reason my uncle uh, is not denouncing ISIS is because he's busy taking pictures. That's yeah, what he likes to do. The, <laughs> I mean, like, he would be like, what? I didn't know I was leader of the Muslim world. He's like, oh, yeah. I mean, of course, that's the issue too. Is that you're talking about, you know, one and a half billion people who are just kind of minding their own business, sending their kids to school, figuring out a way to put food on the table, mm -hmm. and somehow, you know, they become the representatives of, you know, Islamic tolerance and moderation. So now there are those individuals who do have a platform, and there are organizations that do have platforms, and those organizations and individuals, I think, are in an uncomfortable position where they do have to uh, defend, you know, Islam. Islam and they do have to react against uh, the extremism that is so obvious and so prevalent in so many large parts of the uh, of the uh, Muslim world. Now, Reza, that part's easy, but so but then they will turn around and say, "Wait, look, the other half of the equation is okay. It's not all Muslims, and the other Muslims rejected, etc. But when it is violence, when planes do crash, it's almost always Muslims." Well, say. that's not true. I okay. mean, so that's the other thing too is right. that. If you just simply look at the sociological evidence, I mean, uh, 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 Robert Pape did a very long sort of uh, report on this great, great piece. Uh, um, I think the book is called Dying to Win, in which he took, for instance, all suicide bombings over the last 50 years, and he discovered that actually the majority of them were by secularists, by nationalists, and that even the ones that were done by religions, only about a third of them were done by Muslims. So. I think what happens is that when we talk about violence done in the name of religion, 
When was the last time that you saw a, a media report on the Buddhist mobs, for instance, in Myanmar slaughtering Muslim women and children? When was the last time you saw a media report on the Christian mobs in the Central African Republic slaughtering children, women, you know, uh, old men? Uh, th have you have you well, seen any either of those reports well, last time I saw recently? It, well, last time I saw it was on the Young Turks. Yeah, there <laughs> okay. you go. No, and New York Times did a, re a really great piece, uh, of course, uh, detailing the unfortunate things that have happened in Myanmar. Uh, actually, in uh, one particular case, they killed over uh, 40 Muslims. The Buddhists did. Yeah, and they found 10 decapitated heads bobbing in the water. Right. Right. So there's the decapitations by Buddhists. Now. Sam Harris would then turn around and his acolytes, et cetera, would say, now, you see, but that's the exception that proves a rule. Like Buddhists, uh, by their, the text of their, of their religious doctrines, et cetera, are not prone to violence. Now, those people happen to be violent, but they're an exception, right? Whereas the text of the Quran says be violent, that is why Muslims are violent, well, the more text violent of, on average. That's what they would say. Yeah, well, the text of the Quran also says be peaceful. So which one is right? Well, but that's the problem. Okay, now when we get into religions, no, that's why I say it's the real the problem thing, with all the religions. Is that this is the problem, is that the reason why Sam Harris is a fundamentalist, like any other fundamentalist, is because he reads the scripture the way a fundamentalist reads the scripture. He reads the scripture and believes that it is literal and inerrant, and if anybody who disagrees with the literal inerrancy of it, then they are not really a Muslim. They're not really a Christian. You know who else believes that? Fundamentalists believe that. That's who else. Right. So scripture is just words on a page. It has everything that you need. If you're a feminist, you can look to the scripture and find plenty of things to justify your feminism. If you're a misogynist, you can look at the exact same scripture and find plenty of things to justify your misogyny. Only a fool or a bigot follows only half the verses of the scripture and ignores the other half. Mm -hmm. That's what Sam Harris does, it's what ISIS does, it's what all fundamentalists do. Yeah, the flip side is it's also what religious people do. And so here's, okay. Absolutely. All right, so I half completely agree with you and half disagree with you. So this, this is what I mean. Look, we, uh, when I read Sam, I often see him saying Muslims, they take it literally, that's why they're particularly dangerous. Yeah. Christians, if they took it literally like they used to 600 years ago, they would be dangerous, but uh, we're past that. It's interesting, and then people always, whenever a Christian does something, it's not because he's Christian, yeah. he just happens to be Christian. That's because Sam, by the way, that's because Sam Harris's research methodology is the television, okay? <laughs> That's okay. Sam Harris's research methodology. This is not an expert on religion. This is not a man who has done a day of field work. He speaks no, no, uh, you know, biblical or or Quranic languages. He's done absolutely no research whatsoever in the history of religions or the sociology of religions. He's a neuroscientist, and I'm sure he's a very good one. But that doesn't make you an expert on religion. And for him to say Christians don't take their text seriously is a silly thing to say. It's one that is completely ignorant of the two billion Christians around the world and the way that they understand their texts. Some of them do, some of them do not. Same as Muslims, same with Jews. So, you know, we live in a, in a country that's predominantly Christian here in the U.S., right? So, uh, it's... 70%. It, right. It's not surprising that people want don't want to hear the ugly side of Christianity, although they are thirsting for the ugly side of <laughs> Islam, right? They can't get enough of that news. So when you say Hitler, for example, was Christian, they say, no, 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 he wasn't. So let me just quickly quote Hitler. Uh, here's Mein Kampf. The anti-Semitism of the new movement uh, was based on religious ideas instead of racial knowledge. Oops. And then he said in 1936, I believe today that I am acting in the sense of the almighty creator. By warding off the Jews, I am fighting for the Lord's work. <laughs> okay, so when he says, I am butchering 13 million people, including 6 million Jews, because I'm doing the Lord's work, he's not a Christian. Okay. Right. <laughs> but, but let me, in all fairness, I think that's all religious communities do this. I mean, mm -hmm. it, and I totally understand the sentiment for a religious community to... Uh, dismiss extremists in their own community as mm. not one of them, but see extremists in other communities as representative of them. Uh, and you know, as, uh, by the way, atheists are are just as bad at this because mm. you know when you talk about the fact that well, I mean, look, if you if you just compare.
Maoism, Stalinism, Pol Potism, just those three alone, just just those three. I don't even mm. need to move on to fascism and socialism. Uh, just those three alone are responsible for 20, 25 million deaths in the name of atheism, in the name of militant secularism. These were attempts to forcibly remove religion from society. They resulted in the deaths of tens of millions. Atheists will say, that's not really atheism. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Muslims you know will what? say ISIS. That's not really. That's not really Islam. Christians will say, you know, the, the Hitler. That's not really Christianity. I get it. But the fact of the matter is, if you call yourself a Christian, you're a Christian. If you call yourself a Muslim, you're a Muslim. If you call yourself an atheist, you're an atheist. And if you then do actions in the name of your belief system, and atheism is a belief system like any other belief system, it's a set of propositions about the reality of the world. That's called the belief system. You don't need to believe in God to have a belief system. So You, you have this, scent, this desire to say that, that anything that doesn't represent your particular belief system isn't part of you, and that's just dangerous and wrong. So I'm agnostic, and so overall I'm in the atheist community, let's put it that way, right? So you're right that I have this knee-jerk reaction that, well, wait a minute now, Stalin didn't do it because he was an atheist, yes, he, he did, did it because he was power-hungry. Many, hungry. Do you know how many priests and nuns Stalin s- slaughtered? How many yeah. priests and nuns Mao? Slaughtered, but they also slaughtered non priests and you know, etc. Right. But I hear what you're saying on that, and I'll examine my views on that more, okay, uh, and look into it because I think that ultimately the core of what you're saying is it isn't about the religion or lack of religion, it's other forces, cultural forces, etc., that are driving the killings, whether they're done by Christians, Muslims, or atheists, and so we're just ascribing it to a religion. But, but let's let's get to the part I disagree with you on. When you say, like, those guys are taking it literally, and so that's not fair, because that's not what religion is. Well, I, but it is what religion is. That, like, wait, so, that's not what, I never said that's not what religion is. Okay, so, yeah. so okay, let's, that's why we have this conversation for clarity. Okay, so when I look at the Bible or the Quran, uh, I think, okay, that's crazy. Okay, so there are parts of it that are great. Jesus says, you know, Turn the other cheek and the Sermon on the Mount, and that's lovely. In Islam, they emphasize uh, that all races are equal, mm-hmm. which is a great part of Islam that almost never gets talked about. But they also say, and in some parts they say, treat the Christians and the Jews like they're your brothers, mm-hmm. right? But in other parts they say slaughter, right? And then in the in the Bible, uh, there are lovely parts, and there are parts where they say slaughter everybody. That's if right. they don't believe in the God of Israel, kill their children, kill their cows. Kill their okay. ox, sheep, and goats. <laughs> yeah. Right. So kill everything in your path. So when you say, okay, well, that's not the religion, but, but it is. That's, no. that's the whole point. That's no, no, why no. it's in the book. So let me explain. And I don't know why people keep keep mm-hmm. saying this about me. Uh-huh. I've never said that's not what religion is. I've okay. never said that you know ISIS isn't Muslim or uh-huh. that you know the 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 uh, Jewish uh, violent Jewish settlers, the so-called price tag uh, Jewish settlers, aren't, aren't really Judaism, uh, or that the marauding Christian bandits slaughtering women and children in the Central African Republic aren't Christian. Of course they are. Again. Mm. If you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself a Muslim, if you call yourself a Jew, you are those things. And no one can tell you that you are not that thing. My argument is that religion, like any ideology, and that's all religion is, it's just an ideology, like Mm. nationalism, like secularism, like atheism, like any ideology can be used to promote good and bad. It can be used to promote life and death. And the fundamental f- difference of how you decide how you sort of uh, I- interact with that ideology has everything to do with the individual mm-hmm. and nothing to do with the text itself in other words yeah but then so my problem is that i, I read the text and so th- these are the texts that people say that they believe in mm-hmm. okay so there's only two possible answers there, which is that you actually do believe the text, in which case you're one of the most dangerous people on the planet, okay? Um, and there are plenty of those people on mm-hmm. all sides, okay? Or you don't believe the text, then I say, 
okay, then what's the point? Why did you like? Why do you choose like? Why do you choose to believe Islam if you know that the text isn't really true? First of all, I don't believe Islam. Islam is a man-made institution. It's a set of symbols and metaphors that provides a language for which to express what is inexpressible, and that is faith. Mm -hmm. It's symbols and metaphors that I prefer, mm -hmm. but it's not more right or more wrong than any other symbols and metaphors. Mm -hmm. It's a language, that's all it is. Well, I would argue that it is uh, more wrong than other symbols and metaphors. And I don't mean Christianity the way Sam Harris and Bill Maher or Judaism or whatever it might be. I look at those religions and I say they're equally wrong. But why not pick symbols and metaphors that don't have the death and violence in the text, right? Let alone all the other horrible like and wrong what? things. Try to try to think of one. Okay, why not come up with your own? I mean, so why do I why do I need to have some guy two thousand years ago or uh, or fourteen hundred years ago uh, interpret something for me that I can interpret for myself uh, in terms of faith and yeah. spirituality, especially when I know for a fact that a he got at least fifty percent of it wrong. Okay, b I know it's not true, right? He didn't actually talk to Allah. There actually is no. Allah, you know that through, yeah. you know it was one of the idols that he picked in a, in a Meccan square. So first of all, I think you have a misunderstanding of the the very concept of scripture or speaking to God. But let's mm -hmm. rewind back for a, a moment here. Why do you speak English? Mm -hmm. It's the language of the my adopted country. So and I imagine that so that you can communicate with me because I speak English. Yes. You could just make up your own language mm -hmm. if you wanted to. Right. Because it's words, more convenient. Your yes. language is just symbols for ideas and expressions. The words coming out of my mouth are absolutely neutral. They have no meaning whatsoever unless you agree on the meaning of these words. You agree with them because you understand them. Yeah. You could, I could just make up my own language right now. I could mm -hmm. just start speaking in some made up language mm -hmm. and you would not understand me. Right. So That's I what religion is. Mm -hmm. When I choose to express my faith in a language of symbols and metaphors that is common, that is understood by another community of faith, I am communicating these ideas, these emotions to that person in a language that they understand. Mm -hmm. If you were an evangelical Christian, I would say, I have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. And you would understand me perfectly. Mm -hmm. We would have a communication. If you were a Jew, I might as well be speaking Chinese. You would have no idea what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So. There is nothing wrong with a person of faith rejecting all religious ideologies and simply expressing that faith through a set of symbols and metaphors completely of their own. Nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. But if you then want to communicate your faith experience to another person, they have to understand your symbols. They have to understand your metaphors. and. There are dozens and dozens of ready-made symbols and metaphors that provide that kind of language for communication. So pick one if you want to. If you don't want to, don't pick one. The Buddha said it perfectly. If you want to strike water, you don't dig six one-foot wells. You dig one six-foot well. Religion is that six-foot well. Mm -hmm. But faith is the water. The water is the same regardless of what well you are drinking from. Mm -hmm. So that's where we get into our personal differences. There might not be a right or wrong answer to that, although I think that uh, a lot of people in the atheist community would say, no, there is a right or wrong answer to that, but then you might call them fundamentalists. But what is the right or wrong okay, answer? But for my, an person, my personal belief is that I don't want to speak a language that half of which is super ugly, okay? And so, so I, I, I want no attachment yeah. to that language. So and this is the thing, so, so then, you sh then I think you should reject nationalism. Nationalism has led to fascism. Uh, no, I do okay. reject it, Great. yeah. So and like, you should reject socialism, because socialism led to Nazism. You should re reject Marxism, certainly. Uh, I uh, do, <laughs> so okay. If so you are the kind of person who rejects any and all ideologies, Fantastic, but then you should also reject atheism because no, atheism no, led to Maoism. Okay, no, no, hold on. So, Reza, are there ideologies that I believe in? Of course there are. So, for example, I believe that there's a right balance in how big or small a government should be. It's not 
perfectly easy to put it in terms of a word. Is that the word socialism? Well, no, not in the perceptions of some. Good. Is it capitalism? No, definitely not in the perceptions of some. But there is some balance where you say, okay, government should be in the business of cops, but it shouldn't be in the business of sneakers, right? Mm -hmm. So I, there's an ideology of my own that I believe in. If you want to put a word to it, I'm okay with that, okay? You want to say socialist, capitalist, whatever you want to call it, right? But there is no text that goes along with that word, half of which people have, might have done terrible things on behalf of that word, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But there is no text that goes with that word that says, oh, by the way, here's a smart balance between small and big government, and the other half of the text says kill everybody. Right. <laughs> so this argument is the one that Bill Maher uses where he says, you know, if uh, he, I love this line of his, he says that if you, if there's a, a turd in the swimming pool, you don't go swimming in the swimming pool. Mm -hmm. And so no matter how wonderful a scripture may be, no matter how much it talks about love and peace and compassion and all of those things, if there's one verse in there that is horrific according to our 21st century sensibilities, then you should reject the entire thing. Again, that's called fundamentalism. That's an inability to understand that scripture is not just infinitely malleable, but that it represents every single aspect of the human nature. The peaceful aspect, the warlike aspect, the loving aspect, the hateful aspect. And that's why all scriptures are that way. Now, you can say, I don't believe that scripture is divinely inspired and therefore I don't take it seriously at all. That's a perfectly valid thing to say. You can say, that uh, scripture, you know, to me, is just something that a human being wrote, and it's as you know uh, valuable as you know some book that somebody wrote today. That's a perfectly valid thing to say. But I think that if you say, if you use the turd in the swimming pool argument, you're having a fundamental misunderstanding of what scripture is about. Mm. It's a signpost. It's a uh, an attempt to encompass the entire. Uh, emotional experience of a human being, but in a absolutely historical context. And that's why it's so important to understand the historical context of it. I mean, the you know Leviticus says that if your child disobeys you, you should take him to the uh, outskirts of the town and stone him to death. Mm -hmm. I imagine most people don't, most Jews don't do that, <laughs> you know, right. or, because or they understand that that's a contextual issue, that that has context involved in it. And so while that may have been okay 3,000 years ago, it's not okay now. What people fail to understand is that that is the majority opinion of even the most literalist literalist, okay? And this is important. The most literalist literalist in the world doesn't read the scripture completely mm. literally. Mm -hmm. They pick and choose. And the way that they pick and choose is by their own preconceived notions, their own prejudices, which is why on the very first day of the study of religion, the very first thing that you learn is that people do not derive their values from their scripture, people insert their values in their scripture. Okay, I think that that is generally true. I think that's what a lot of the, what you're calling the new atheists, the Sam Harris, the Bill Mars, et cetera, misunderstand, okay? I think that it applies equally to Islam as it does to Christianity and Judaism. I think that the overwhelming majority of Muslims don't really believe the script, the literal text. In fact, as you're pointing out, almost no one does. Well, they I bet do. They pick and choose. They the, say they don't pick and choose, but they pick and choose. Right. They does, interpret does it in their own Does Al-Baghdadi really sprinkle goat blood in the four corners of right. the yeah, mosque? Yeah, of course he doesn't. Of yeah. course, no, yeah. even Al-Baghdadi doesn't literally, literally yeah. believe it. So almost no one does. And, and so to say that Muslims believe it more than Christians and Judaism is both ahistorical and is currently not true. 32% of, of this country says they believe every word of the Bible is inerrant. That's a hundred million people, by the way. Right, a hundred million Americans say they take the Bible literally. But they don't. But, but they don't. So they don't, and they believe, they say they take it as literally as the Muslims say they take it literally. Okay, that right. we're all agreed on. But I, I come back to Reza, why bother with things that are incorrect, right? You, I mean, the reason they're not taking it literally is because 
it's madness to kill the livestock and everyone who disagrees with you, whether it's right. in the Torah, which it is, whether it's in the Bible, which it is, whether it's in the Quran, yeah. which it is. So why am I start with a, starting with, a, to use your words, a language that is so flawed? So wh why would I, I don't want to share that language. I want to, I want to tell other people, don't speak that language, because once you begin that language, there is a fatal flaw in it, uh, and some percentage of people will choose to apply the bad parts of that language, whether they're Christians or Muslims or Jews, etc. right? So why go with that flawed yeah. language at yeah. all, especially when you know it isn't true? Well, I think there's a fundamental mistake in your definition of true. Your definition of true is that which can be factually verified. Your definition of true okay, is barely <laughs> your definition of true is barely 300 years old. Did you mm. do you know that that the very concept of what you and I refer to when we say the word true is 300 years old. True in the ancient world had very little to do with facts or any kind of exigencies of facts. These are uh, you know, truth statements that have to do with the nature of reality, the experience of human beings. The people who wrote the New Testament didn't think that what they were writing were factual, was factually true. They just simply didn't. Mm -hmm. They understood that what they were writing was sacred history, what we nowadays refer to as mythology which is precisely why these words have lasted thousands of years. Why do we read something that was written 5,000 years ago? It's not because it's true in the sense that you and I understand it, it's because it's still it still matters because it's malleable. Is that it's because it can be transformed into whatever you as an individual need. Now, from your perspective, you're saying, yeah, but I don't need it. So therefore, I don't take it seriously. And that's a perfectly valid viewpoint. There's nothing wrong with that. You can just simply look at a text, any text, uh, or for that matter, any ideology, and say, I don't need it. But you have to recognize that religion, whether it's textually based or not, is an ideology like any other. And you can't judge an ideology by the way in which it can be transformed into its extremist terms, which is why I was saying, then therefore you have to reject nationalism because of fascism. You no, have to but reject religion makes it easier. Of, religion makes it easier because it's in the text. And so, Reza, I mean, it's easy to say truth is a 300-year-old concept, and they didn't really think it was true even when they were writing it. But today, billions of people believe it is, quote unquote, true in the sense that we think of it today, the word true, right? So they didn't. They don't think the New Testament's a metaphor, That's right? right? Yeah. And they don't think the Quran's a metaphor. Yeah. They think it's real. They think that God actually spoke to people and told them that, and they should yes. follow that. Now, again, they don't actually follow it, but they think that if you ask them, is it true? They would categorically say yes. Yeah. So, and that's why they follow that as opposed to Zeus or Thor, which is also mythology, but they don't believe is true, right? So, well, given that. Well, we're in a pickle here because we've got billions of people following things that they think are true, which are not in fact true. Which, <laughs> by the way, is not a problem. I mean, uh -huh. this is the other thing that I think is grotesque about uh, Sam Harris and his sort of ilk, is that they believe the problem is belief. The problem isn't belief. You can believe whatever the hell you want to believe. I mean, if you are somebody who believes that, you know, God made the world in six 24-hour days and that women shouldn't be uh, heard or have any kind of role and that gays should be, uh, you know, uh, that, that gays are, are burning in hell or whatever, fine. I think that's disgusting. I completely disagree with you. But so what? You can believe whatever the hell you want to believe. Mm -hmm. It's actions that have to be condemned when you put grotesque beliefs into actions and violate basic human rights, now we can condemn that. When Sam Harris says that there are certain beliefs that just in and of themselves are so grotesque that the people who believe them, we may actually do kill them, uh, as he says in the end of faith, that's a grotesque statement. It's actions that need to be condemned not beliefs. Yeah. You can disagree with a belief, but so what? Right. So now, of course, Sam has always would say that he was taken out of context when, uh, on that statement, but I just read his defense uh, on that particular issue, and he showed the whole context, and 
it's the same. Okay. There is no. He says no it's in the context for, of actions, etc. But when you read what he actually wrote, he does not say actions. He says propositions for their beliefs. That's right. Okay. So that to me is where I agree with you that that borders on if if it doesn't cross the line of fundamentalism, because that's exactly what the fund, religious fundamentalists would say. I'm going to kill you for your beliefs. beliefs. Right. Yeah. So that is very dangerous territory that I think Sam made a terrible mistake going into. Because I actually, when it comes to atheism, when it comes to his critique of all the religions, I actually completely agree with him. Okay? But when he gets into, but the Muslims are worse than everyone else, and just because they believe it, we might have to take action against yeah. them. Then he gets into super dangerous territory that I think is both yeah. counterfactual and counterproductive. Yeah. Right? In terms of if you want to make the world less fundamentalist, you're not going in the right direction. Okay, so I, I think we've kind of laid out our thoughts here as to where we stand on the issues. One final thing, he, he says in, in one of his more uh, recent uh, writings that he understands the motivations of some, though he might disagree with them. But he thinks your motivations might be a little bit more sinister. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. literally the word he used, sinister. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I literally don't know what he means by that. What, how do you take that? What do you think he means? And how do you address that? I, I don't know what he means. I, actually, I don't read Sam Harris's uh, blogs. He seems to be blogging all the time. Um, I think what somebody tweeted a line from that, that he, he thinks that I am writing, quote, a jet stream of white guilt from you mm -hmm. know, media appearance to media appearance. I think this is really the problem with Sam Harris and his sort of zealous disciples is that and and why the only term for what they what they believe in is fundamentalism when you combine an absolute sense of certainty with the kind of literalism that I have already described with a utter sense of siege, right? Sam Harris thinks that he is completely under siege by everyone, that everyone is out to get him. Uh, and, of course, this notion that those who disagree with you aren't just wrong, but evil, sinister. They've got some hidden agenda. You know, it's not just a disagreement, that there is something else going on there. That's called fundamentalism. And it doesn't matter whether it's religious fundamentalism or atheist fundamentalism. And it needs to be rejected by all people. The problem with not just Sam, but with the new atheists in general, is that they give atheism a bad name. My greatest intellectual heroes are all atheists, whether I'm talking about Schopenhauer or Freud or Marx or Feuerbach. These were the people who gave birth to the modern world. They were the people who gave birth to the Enlightenment. But they were experts in religion. They understood religion and then criticized it from a place of expertise. And there is lots to criticize about religion, as you have as rightly said. But what is happening now is that sort of a guy sitting in his room watching television with a blog has now become a self-described expert on religion and espouses the most basic, uninformed, and unsophisticated views about religion from a position of you know, intellectualism. Uh, and, and I think that that's dangerous because I understand your animosity towards religion, but even you understand that religion is not going anywhere. On mm -hmm. the contrary, religion is a growing force in the world. It's a growing force in the United States. The most recent Pew poll showed that a majority of Americans want more religion in public life, not less. So this idea that religion is just bad science, it's failed science, it's just silly superstition, it's silly belief in gods, despite the fact that a about a third of the major religions in the world don't actually believe in God. That is not just a misunderstanding and mischaracterization of religion, but it's dangerous because what it does is it keeps us from having some very important and necessary conversations about the role of religion in society, about the problem of extremism in religious communities, and about how to reconcile the realities of the modern world with these 
you know, contextual scriptures that so many people nowadays uh, view incorrectly as literal and inerrant. That's the problem. Again, uh, we have some disagreements in, in, in some of the issues. Uh, I believe that eventually uh, we will be rid of these particular religions. We will not be rid of faith or spirituality. That it, that's a inner, it's a human drive that, that's part of our DNA. But uh, eventually I believe that people will say, come on, we, <laughs> we all really believe this for all this time. That Why do you think that, by the way? Okay. Why do I think yeah. that we'll be rid of them? Yeah, why do you think that? Because I, I have faith in knowledge. <laughs> because you think that right? we are going to come up with certain scientific truths that will invalidate religious truths. You do realize we've done that already, right? Mm. Did Christianity go away when we discovered that the sun was the center of the of No, the, no, no, no. Uh, it's not about system? that. It's about the spread of knowledge. And so the, the, when we did not spread knowledge at all, we were the most religious. Everybody in the world was religious, right? Then the Gutenberg comes out with this press. So we become, you know, it's a slow transition to less and less religious. And I actually think, oh, I know what you're saying, that most people want more religion in America, in public life. But at the same time, we now have a group of non-believers that, according to studies, are anywhere between 14 to 20 percent of wrong, the country. Wrong, wrong, stop. Not non-believers, non-affiliated. Non that's a different word. Okay. We atheists. But that's exactly this, what I'm going. No, nope, but see, yeah, right. Okay. So, so non-affiliated are people who are spiritual, who believe in God, but who refuse to acknowledge any one of these man-made religious systems. Who are coming to my systems. exact position, which is that these religions are absurd. It doesn't mean I'm not. I don't have faith, or I'm not spiritual. But come on, I feel like a thousand years from now, we're really going to have a conversation about whether Moses spoke to a bush or Jesus walked on water yeah, or all the I other absurd are. things that Muhammad said were in the, uh, that he talked to God about. No I think way. We are. And, and you know what? We'll also be talking about you know, Scientology and we'll be talking about Mormonism I think and they will we'll look be talking back. about the new religious traditions. I think they will look back and say, I can't believe that billions of, how could they have believe that there's so, no way let me tell we you will why not you be think able that. to comprehend right. how crazy we were and you think that because you think religion is bad science mm -hmm. that's why you think that but religion isn't bad science it's a completely different mode of knowing just like science is a mode of knowing and eventually what's going to happen is that religion will change it's transformed what we call Christianity today is not what we called Christianity a hundred years ago it's certainly not what we called Christianity a thousand years ago that's fair. but if tomorrow a gigantic alien vessel from Alpha Centauri shows up on, on you know, uh, uh, Central Park and aliens come out and say, hi everybody, you know what religion is going to do? Take that information, absorb it, and keep going. Religion is just a perspective of reality. That's what it is. And it's never going to change. I mean, I'm sorry, it's never going to go away. It will always change. It's constantly changing. It's constantly adapting. It's constantly taking information. But Judaism has been around for 5,000 years. Hinduism has been around for six, 7,000 years. It's going to be around another 1,000 years. The great majority of which we lived in caves. Okay, <laughs> But I don't disagree with you that a lot of people, if aliens came down, would say aliens of Nazareth. <laughs> 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 and my final word on Sam Harris and Bill Maher and all that is that they view themselves as so courageous for taking on Islam in America. Wow, how very, very bold. <laughs> well, you know, there's the fundamental, you're very, you're very right. This all began, by the way, by with a very simple fundamental error on Bill Maher's part, which is this idea that liberals don't criticize Islamic practices. <laughs> what is he talking about? I mean, it's the forefront of the feminist movement against Islamic misogyny, the forefront of the democratic activist movement against Islamic autocracy, these are all progressives. These are all liberals. They are the ones who are manning the NGOs. They are the ones who are out in Syria, out in Iraq, trying to educate women. The idea that liberals will, you know, don't somehow criticize extreme practices if they're done by Muslims is just empirically false. It's just this feeling that Bill Maher has. So the very thing that launched this entire conversation is just silly. Right, and look, we're the largest progressive show online by a mile, right? <laughs> yeah. By more than a mile. 
and all we do is talk about how fundamentalism and yes definitely Islamic fundamentalism is a hundred percent wrong we were the first ones to talk about Boko Haram we were the first ones to yeah. talk about Isis every time there's an honor killing there's a beheading there's this or that we rage about it so which liberals aren't angry about that this is what Bill Maher and Sam Harris mean when they say liberals don't uh, refuse to criticize Islam what they mean is liberals refuse to condemn all Muslims like we do. That's, That's exactly what right. And unfortunately, yes, we won't agree to that, which is not true. I think, you know, if everybody By thinks they're By the way, it's not even is, liberalism. That's right. not a liberal view. To, okay. to blanketly say all people in this faith are think the same thing is counterfactual, counterproductive, and not what liberals think.